Okay, thanks for coming. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, vertex miners of graphs. And this will be a collection of results that uh, I and some other work people have been working on. And uh, so there are many people you will see. Some of you may be part of the thought. So the plan is to uh, begin with the planar graphs and miners. So it's nothing to do with the, they are nothing to do with the vertex miners, but still uh, they will give our motivations. And then I will talk about circle graphs and vertex miners, and then we will discuss connectivity functions, and then uh, talk about the vertex miner ideas. We'll describe what could be done for vertex miner theory motivated by the graph miners. And then I will describe some of the conjectures on induced graphs and we can relax we can relax the condition. Instead of saying induced subgraphs, we can talk about the vertex miners. Alright, so let's begin. So planar graphs. So graph is planar if it can be drawn on the plane without edge crossings, but you know. And graph minor operations preserve the property of being planar. So here we have two operations, actually three operations. So one is to delete an edge. So when you delete an edge from planar graph, then you still get a planar graph. Another operation is to contract an edge. So you identify two ends of the uh, vertex on an edge, and you still get a kind of planar graph. And you can also delete a vertex, and that gives you a planar graph as well. So we can say that the graph small graph H is a minor of graph big graph G if you can obtain small graph from big graph by a sequence of deletions and subtractions. And this obviously preserves the property of being planar. Right? So if H is a minor, then if H is a minor of planar graph G, then H is planar. So you can talk about the uh, property of being planar in terms of forbidden minors and Grotowski's theorem on planar graphs characterize planar graphs in terms of forbidden minors precisely. So K5 minor, K3 minor 3 characterize planar graphs. So now I will describe what circle graphs are and circle graphs are intersection graphs of chord of circles. So you start with the circle, you draw many chords, and now the, each chord becomes a vertex. And two vertices are adjacent if these corresponding chords intersect. So this chord diagram has uh, five chords, and that will give you this graph, house. Right? And if you want to characterize circle graph, you don't want to use minors. For instance, K6, the complete graph on six vertices, is a circle graph, but uh, it's minor, one of its minor, W5, which is the six vertex wheel, not a circle graph. This graph is not a circle graph because if you try to make uh, this W5 as a, as a code diagram, then you first put the five cycle. There's only one way to put a five chord in a secret way. Now you try to add one more chord, and there's no way to add it. Because no matter, no matter how you try to add an extra chord, you can intersect with at most four chords, right? So there are five chords. That extend this representation. So this wheel of wheel on six vertices at a circle graph. So we cannot characterize circle graphs in terms of forbidden minors, and then we may talk about the operation that preserves the property of being circle graphs. So one of the operations that preserves the property of being circle graph is the local computations. So local computation is an operation that starts with a single vertex V, and when you do, in this case it's one, 
So when you do is you complement over its neighbors. So the two vertices, two neighbors were adjacent in G, then in the new graph, they are no longer adjacent. They were not adjacent, you flip the edge. So you flip the edges between the neighbors of vertex one. But outside of this neighborhood, you don't do anything. So that's why it's called the local complement. And strangely, this operation preserves the property of being circle graph. So suppose I want to find the code diagram representing the local component. So let's say G was a circle graph. Now here's a code diagram. How can I get a code diagram obtained by applying local computation at three? Well, when you do is you look at the two. So you, there's a one chord representing the vertex three. Now, what you do is you flip one side. So for each chord, I put the numbers for, for both ends. And so when you do is instead of six two one five, I flip so five one two six. Then you draw a line whenever you have same number, and that is precisely local complementations. Because if you have two neighbors which were non-crossing before, now you flip one side, they will be crossing. If you have a two non-crossing two neighbors after local complementation, they will be non-crossing. So this property, this this operation on the code diagram, could precisely give you the local complementations. So uh, that's nice. There's another operation. Okay, so so vertex minor, you can define a vertex minor of graph G as a small graph which which can be obtained from bigger graph G by a sequence of local complementation and vertex delete. So is to see that if H is a, a vertex minor of a circle graph, H is a circle graph. All the operations we do preserve the property of being photograph. And there's another operation called the pivot. The pivot is slightly more complicated operations. Uh, I didn't really write down the precise definitions. So what you do is actually you pick an edge of the graph G. So for instance, this figure you have edge two three. What you do is you look at the you look at the common neighbors of these both ends, and you get the neighbors of one vertex but not neighbors of others. So for, instance, for instance, vertex four, red color is a neighbor of two but not neighbor of three. Yellow color is a neighbor of three but not neighbor of two. Blue ones are common neighbors. And also there are vertices which are not neighbors of any three. Now when you do is you flip the edges between different colors. Between blue and red, and between red and yellow, and yellow and blue. So between all three pairs, you flip the edges. But outside that, you don't do anything. And then you change the name. Two becomes three, and three becomes two. For some magical reason. <laughs> okay, so that's the pivot operation, but probably you will get in a minute. But what's, what's happening is, but in a circle graph, if I have a Picking, picking an edge is same as picking two crossing chords. Okay? Here are one chord, another chord. So what you do is, you, you have now partition of the circle into four sections. Now you swap the second section and fourth section. So this one five interval become four six one, and then four six one become one five. Okay, so you just rotate it, and then turns out that this graph is exactly obtained by this operation. So this is called the pivot, and we say by same reason we say uh, a small graph H is a pivot minor of a big graph if it obtains small graph from a bigger graph by applying a sequence of pivot vertex D. Okay. 
So if you have any questions, let me know. I can happy to answer. Now, uh, of course, uh, pivot minor of circle graph is a pivot minor. Uh, circle graph. Now, these two are actually not, uh, not isolated concept because actually you can simulate you can simulate pivot by a sequence of local computation. You do three local computations, three, the one, one local computation at three, and the other at two, and then one, one more at three. So you flip here, and then flip here, and then flip here. So that will give you one pivot. Uh, one pivot can be written as three local computations. So this picture shows that this is true in a code diagram, but in general, the general graph, this is true again. So you can define pivot by sequence of three local computations. So every pivot minor is a vertex, vertex minor, not vice versa. And now, the property of being circle graph is closed on the taking vertex minor, so you can think of the Grotowski type theorem. So can we find the forbidden vertex minors in the circle graph? And the answer is yes. So in 1994, Duchenne proved that graph is a circle graph if and only if it doesn't contain three of these graphs as a vertex minor. At that time, vertex minor didn't the word vertex minor did was wasn't born at the time. <laughs> uses the word called L reduction. Pivot minor he uses the word P reduction. Okay, so these three graphs are the forbidden vertex minors for being circle graph. How about pivot minors? So there's a theorem Gillan and myself. So the graph is a circle graph if and only if. You don't contain any of these pin graphs as a pivot minor. Okay. And so this is somewhat similar to the story of planar graphs and minor. For planar graphs, you have a finite many minors. Here you have a finite many forbidden vertex minors and pivot minors. And but that's not only the connection. Actually, there's a deeper connection. So the thing is, so here's a theorem by D. in 1981. I don't know whether I pronounce his name correctly. So bipartite graph is a circle graph. It's an only if it's a fundamental graph or planar graph. I should say what fundamental graph is, but uh, I can show you the picture. This is the picture from his paper. So you say you start with a planar graph. You pick a spanning tree, so the red edge represents the spanning tree. Now, think of this small epsilon ball around the edges of the spanning tree, so then you have a circle. Okay. So you can think of this as a circle. And transform into circle, topologically. Now, this graph was, now, what you do is, uh, for edges outside of spanning tree, you inside okay then you have a fork now initially the set of cores and also the edges in the spanning tree will be rotated 90 degree from short cores now you have two sets of cores both side, both form independent sets the code in the circle graph so the graph is too colorable right? so the edges what I mean is Edges inside the circle, they don't cross each other. Because you take a spanning tree on the planar graph. So they don't cross each other when you take a 90 degree rotations, right? And the edges outside also don't cross each other, so they, there's a two coloring. Because, well, uh, yeah, so when you, I mean, it's, right, yeah, yeah. When you take a circle, the out. So let's let's think of the situation where before you flip things inside, right? At that time, you didn't have any any intersection because it was a planar graph. Yeah, it was planar graph. There's no intersection. Now you flip inside by applying inversion of the 
Bir düz spektre sarsın. And the, when you look at the intersection patterns, what, what you observe is that for any edge outside of spanning tree, this edge will be adjacent to edges on the spanning tree, forming a fundamental, fundamental cycle in the graph with respect to this spanning tree. So that's what's called the fundamental graph. So you pick a spanning tree, and then for any edges outside, you make this guy adjacent to all the edges on the fundamental, uh, fundamental cycle. So that's how you get a code diagram and you get a bipartite circle. Conversely, if you have a bipartite circle graph, you have two coloring. So leave one color class inside the circle, the other color class you just flip to outside. And then you contract all the edges inside to make a spanning tree. Right? So the five becomes single point. Now you have a, span, you have a tree inside the circle. And the outside edges become a edges not in the spanning tree. So that's why that's how you get this and transform from a bipartite circle graph to a, a planar graph. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Uh, it's, it was not a contra uh, contraction. It's like a rule. Yeah, right? So for each reason, you put a, put a point. And the dual of uh, for uh, dual of the uh, yeah so it's, yeah it is dual yeah and it doesn't have any cycle so that's why it's spanning tree so this shows you that uh, if you can characterize bipartite planar bipartite circle graph in terms of Ovidan pivot minors you may be able to deduce what planar graphs are. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, planar so the, being bipartite is actually close to undertaking some minors. So the property of being bipartite is close to undertaking some minors. And what, what, what people does on the, this spanning tree is, for instance, if I do people between six and two, what happens is, Instead of choosing this edge for spanning tree, I'm going to choose two for the spanning tree. So that's what pivot does. You're choosing different spanning tree. So pivot minor is nothing but choosing a group spanning tree and then a, and then take a. So, the, so if you look at these 15 forbidden minors, three of them are bipartite. So if we apply this theorem to bipartite graphs, what you deduce is that bipartite graph is a circle graph if and only if it doesn't contain these three particular graphs as a pivot minor. And if you look at three bipartite bipart bipart graphs, actually it turns out that one of them is related to the final matroid, fundamental graph of final matroid, and the other two are actually the fundamental graph of K5 and fundamental graph of K33. So you can deduce Ratoski's theorem. Pivot minors. So these things are more related than okay. So that's the uh, definition of pivot minors, sub vertex minors, and these sort of graphs. Now I will talk about connectivity functions. So for graph minors, the connectivity function is pretty important. We want to talk about connected graphs, two connected graphs, three connected graphs, etc. So for that, we use vertex connectivity function. This function gives you a number, right? For a given partition of edges and two sets, count the number of vertices in the middle, hitting both sides. So that's the vertex connectivity function. And that is quite natural for the study of graph minors because when you have a graph, when you apply contraction or deletion, this connected function doesn't increase. It can only decrease. So this is a good function for the study of graph minors, but that's not good for us. For, for vertex minors, this function is not really good. We need some connectivity function, which uh, 
doesn't increase when you take a local complementations or product species. That's where we use cut rank function. This is the function defined in terms of the rank of some matrix. That's why it's called the rank cut rank. Right? So cut rank function of graph is defined as follows. So you have a vertex set x and y. Right? So the x is a vertex set. And, and then uh, for a set x, now I define the cut rank of x to be the rank of this matrix, Z1 matrix, whose rows are indexed by x, columns are indexed by the complement of x, and you put 1 if these two vertices are adjacent, that are otherwise. Okay? And now you compute the rank of this matrix, and that's, co get, that's called the cut rank function. And when I compute this rank function, I assume that this matrix is over the binary field. 1 plus 1 is 0. That will be convenient later. I mean, for the theory, it doesn't really matter. You can think of the other situation. Uh, for the convenience, we use the binary field. And why is this an interesting, con uh, interesting connectivity function? That's because if you have a cut with a low rank, if the rank is low, then you can, you can probably say that the edge, set of edges connecting left to right. For instance, it could be like complete all one matrix. So in the normal, in the usual connected function, if you have many edges, connectivity will be high. But when you compute the rank, all one matrix, the rank is one. But it coincides with our intuition. That it has to be simple. This has to be elementary graph, right? Because we, we can easily describe the graph. Everything on the left is adjacent to everything on the right. So it has to have a small value. Cut rank function gives you. Now, this function is not close to taking. Uh, I mean, what I mean is, this function could increase when you take a minus. For instance, here's a graph G. I delete one edge and rank increases. Of course, it's possible, right? Because when you have a zero one matrix, changing one to zero may increase the rank. So this doesn't behave well with the miners, but it behaves well with the local computations. So here's the reason. So imagine that I'm applying local computation at the vertex B. Now here are the neighbors, A and A and C are the neighbors of B. Okay? Now I look let's look at the cut rank between uh, left and right where this curve represents cut. Okay, so left hand side are the column are rows, and right hand side A B are the columns. Now I claim that the rank is invariant on the taking local computation at B. Why? So imagine that I have a matrix like this. So because V is complete to A, all these entries, the V's row, will be 1. Right? And then B is anti-complete to V, so all these entries for B, the row of V is going to be 0. And after local computation, these edges will be complemented. Also, inside those, inside A and inside C will be complemented, but those edges are not on the cut. The only edges on the cut are between A and C, and those are these areas. Okay? So, the effect of applying local computation is to change 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 on this blue region. But that's basically adding the first row into these rows, because 1 plus 1 is 0. Use binary free, that's then uh, local computation. Preserve the cut rank function. So that's nice. So, therefore, uh, when you have a vertex minor of graph G, then the uh, cut rank function can never increase. So, the local computation preserves the cut rank function. When you delete a vertex, it can only decrease because it's just going to be a major. So then we can talk about the connectivity. I never wrote it down in the paper. 
I have only have a manuscript. So graph is k rank connected. If uh, whenever a cup rank function value is less than k, then one side, one of the side should be small. So it's motivated by the matroid connectivity. So for instance, matroid, the graph is one rank connected if and only if whenever rank is less than one. So whenever rank is zero, one side has to be has to have a zero vertex. Okay, so that means the graph is connected. What up? What about two? Graph is two rank connected whenever rank is less than 2, so whenever rank is 1, then one side has a single vertex. Okay. So let, that's two rank connected. And actually, the, uh, there's a paper in 1982 by Bill Cunningham, uh, uh, which defines the notion called the split decomposition, and this is the same as prime with respect to split decomposition. That's the same rank connected. Assuming the graph is connected. And he described the structure of graphs with respect to this uh, split decomposition. Whenever you have a graph, you have a unique decomposition. It decomposes into graphs which are two rank connected or stars uniquely. And there are other tools, for instance, for three connected graphs. There are well-developed theories study. So for instance, there's something called the chain theorem. Whenever you have, a, whenever you have three connected graph, I think I missed the simple. But whenever you have a simple three connected graph, you can always find the minor, which is simple three connected and has a one less edges. And also there's a split theorem. Whenever you have a minor, which is uh, three connected, you can always, unless it's a wheel, you can always find the, uh, another Slightly smaller minor, which still contains same minor, and all of them have an analog for vertex minors, and even and even simpler. So chain theorem exceptions are wheels of arbitrary size. So for vertex minor, the exceptions are basically anyway. These are nice tools to study vertex minors. And if you use those theorems, you can prove structures like this. So on the left hand side, so if you use the split theorem for minors, you can easily deduce that graphs without K5 minors are precisely planar graphs or K33 or the V8, or there is a new one or one one or two or three sums. You can generate all of them by these operations. Analogous results. That when you have a no W5 uh, with of six vertices as a vertex minor, you can describe all of them by uh, either circle graphs or cube or W7. So these are the forbidden minors for being circle graphs or the cube. Or you can make a disjoint union of them, or you can make a one join of them. So it is doing two graphs by part of rank one. So basically, you can do many of many things. You many things we know from graph minors come from graph. Okay, so that's the, now I will describe some of the results on vertex minor ideas. So what are the vertex minor ideas? They are the class of graphs closed undertaking vertex minor. What I mean is. If graph G is in my ideal, then every vertex minor is in that ideal. Then we say it's a vertex minor. Yours. So what do we mean by characterizing? Well, we want to if we want to find a uh, necessary and sufficient condition for an ideal to have a certain property. So here's an example. So. Imagine that I is a vertex minor I class of graphs cross not taking vertex minors. Now we say that this is one property we can talk about. Graphs in I have bounded number of vertices. So when do we have this property? 
it's an infinite, possibly infinite set of graphs, right? And this class of graphs has found a number of vertices if and only if, by claiming this, if and only if you don't contain this particular set as a subset. Why? So the backward direction is obvious. If you contain complement of complete graph, the empty graph on large number of vertices, you have too many vertices, so it's obvious. What about the forward direction? Imagine that you have a huge number of vertices in your set. By Ramsey, you have a complete graph or, anti or the complement of a complete graph. If you have an empty graph, then you're done. If you have a complete graph, you apply one local commutation, you have a star, hit one vertex, you have a, have a empty graph. So, get this for free from Ramsey's. So, I, I would think that this is a nice characterization. But vertex minor ideas with this property. Another example is when you have a connected graph, so this is another property. Idea has the property that all connected graphs in this ideal has bounded number of vertices. How can you characterize that? And you can characterize that by saying that uh, not all complete graphs are in I and not all paths are in I. And this is if and only if characterization because <laughs> this is again easy. You have large graph, you have large connected graph, then you must have a large vertex, large degree vertex or long pass. Have a large degree vertex, you must have a click or star by Ramsey. So if you have a click or star, if you have a click, then you are done. If you have a star, you apply one local commutation, you can you pass your pass. So that's the point. Right, yeah, so I some people call it ideas for graph miners. Right, right, right. And uh, what what Ozan and I did in 2014 is that if the idea has the property that all fine graphs have bounded number of vertices, then you don't contain two. And these this is if and only if theorem. So not all cycles are in the idea, and two complete graphs joined by a perfect matching. So you cannot contain those things. So what I mean is, so the, another way of saying same theorem is that if you have a large prime graph, it's a large two rank of connected graph, then you must contain either a cycle of large size or this graph as a vertex mine. That's the thing. There are more properties think, to think about, but actually there are not many interesting vertex minor ideas. But for minor, so for the property of being so for minor ideas, there are surfaces of arbitrary genus. Right? So graphs embeddable on a surface of genus 10. This thing is closed on the taking, but, uh, taking minors, and they form an interesting layers of classes. Now, I wanted to have a, such a thing for vertex minors, but we didn't find any complicated find a simple one. I will describe some of them, like rank scatters, rank k scatters, or rank depth, linear rank width, rank width. Other things are not closed under taking minors, but these are closed minors. So average come rank is one of them. So this is, uh, you may have seen it. Him. So he's Lung Gwen is one of the undergraduate students at Kais. So he and I worked on the for the average cut rank. So given a graph G, you consider all possible cuts and compute the cut rank, take an average of that. It turns out that this number never increases when you take a vertex minor. <laughs> I never thought about it. He was the one who came up with the parameter. So we've studied some of the properties. When do we have a bounded average covering? 
for which class, for which vertex minorities, they bounded every covering, and we had uh, these characterizations. So those are exactly the, they have a property that every graph is actually blow up a small graph, one a graph on small number of vertices by replacing each vertex by a big or stable set. And Ozang and I had a theorem saying that uh, ideal has a bounded average cup rank if and only if you don't con you don't contain large matching. Questions? Yep. Yeah. So really, yeah, if and only. So. You Bounded average curl rank is equivalent to bounded average maximum curl rank. Proof is uh, maybe by factor 4, so probabilistic argument. And we could further generalize that. So, what is this? It's just for the rank K scattered. And now, what's, what's that? I partition the vertex set into sets of small size, size and most k, such that no matter how I take a sub collection, the union of them has a small cut rank. Okay, the rank k written is is the maximum possible. <laughs> okay, so among all partitions, you want to find the minimum possible. So you want to choose a partition so that any sub collection will give the small cut rank and you take a union of them. And then a class of graphs is rank k scattered if this, this number is small. This number is bounded. So for, uh, what we did actually is that uh, a class of the vertex minor idea is rank k scattered if and only if you don't contain this particular set as a subset or all possible connected graph on k plus one vertices. So take any k plus one vertex graph H and you make a disjoint union, so many copies of H. If you contain arbitrary many copies of H as in your ideal, then this rank uh, this parameter will be unbounded. The reason is, imagine that you have many copies of uh, H, okay? Now, each part can contain only K vertices. But in each component, you must have a K vertices coming from different parts. So you can choose the, the pair which has, uh, which are adjacent and coming from different parts. And then many of them will be from, uh, so no matter how you choose a partition, many of them will cross this part, and then uh, you have a matching of large, large number of matching, so the cut rank will be big. So one direction, is, uh, actually the proof is somewhat non-trivial. Then uh, Ozang and I worked further from this, like, tried to invent other properties, Vertex minor ideas, so this is uh, something called depth D rank brittleness. So uh, KR decomposition is a tree together with the labeling of the leaves, so that the tree has a radius and most R, and for each internal node of the tree, no matter how you split it into two, the cut rank function is bounded by K. Where, I mean, you, whenever you split the internal node by two, the two internal node to two, then you have a natural partition of the leaves. This partition gives you the partition of cut rank and most k. Then it's called the KR decomposition. And what is depth D rank brittleness? Well, it's a minimum k such that you have a KD decomposition. So D is fixed. So K1, so for instance, that's one rank brittleness is the same as maximum cut rank. Because you're going to have a radius one tree, so there's only one tree. 
radius, there's only one radius, one tree. No matter how you split, rank is small, that means any partition of the vertex cells will give you a small cut rank. What about next one? So rank uh, bound, uh, depth two rank three. So Ozong and I have a theorem saying that a class of graphs, the vertex minor ideas, has bounded depth to rank blindness if and only if you don't contain these two. The first one is pass, arbitrary long pass, and the second one is uh, many copies of trees of the depth uh, radius two, where these trees are the subdivision of a uh, star. So K2, T25 is subdivision of K15, and then you make the five copies of this. Don't contain that as a, a vertex minor. So that's 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 D rank bridges. I don't have a answer for depth three rank bridges, but we do have an answer for bounded depths. So this is about rank depths. So you have a same KR decomposition, but rank depths is defined as a minimum K such that graph has a K K decomposition. So you have a radius K and uh, any cut, any splitting of the internal node give you the with the cut rank at most k. This was invented by Matt and Ozong and me. And recently we proved the theorem saying that vertex minor ideal has bounded rank depths if and only if you don't contain all paths. So in other words, if graph has a large Rank depth must have a long path as a vertex minor. And this was initially conjectured by this oh, 2016. So that's about rank depth. Now I go a bit, little bit further. So, how about uh, linear rank width? So, linear rank width is nothing but the minimum k such that there is a permutation of the vertices, the ordering of some vertices so that. Wherever you cut, the cut rank between left and right, more. That's the most k. That's a linear rank width. There's a conjecture that the vertex minor ideal has bounded rank width if and only if you don't contain all trees. Uh, we, we are still, we don't have a group yet. And now if you remove the word linear, then you have a rank width. The rank width Minimum k, so you can have a tree like structure, tree structure, so you can decompose that vertex set into two and two and two until each part becomes single time. And whenever you split, you must use parts of cut rank and most. And this was introduced by myself and Paul Seymour. And this is compared, so motivation of this was actually branch with the graphs. So they use vertex connectivity. We use cut rank function. And then we can talk about the vertex minor ideas having unbounded rank width. And this is analogous to the theorem of Robertson Seymour for bounded unbounded tree width. So the so our not our <laughs> Jim and Ozong and Rose McCarthy and Paul Wallen, they proved last year that Vertex minor ideal has bounded rank width if and only if all circle graphs. It doesn't contain all circle graphs. And this is relevant, relevant to the uh, this trivial grid theorem. And you have seen the relation between circle graphs and uh, planar graphs. Planar graphs are precisely the one related to circle, bipartite circle graphs. They have some connection. So there's a conjecture saying that T1 minor ideal has bounded rank with if and only if or it, con it doesn't contain all bipartite This is still open. So if you replace vertex minor by P1 minor, potentially do is bipartite circle graphs here. And if that conjecture is true, then that will apply uh, first here. Will be interesting. Now, how about the next one? In some parts where 
have uh, some analogous theory for graph miners in terms of vertex miners. Uh, are there more? About rare quasi ordering, so the Robertson Simmers theorem says that every class of graphs first don't take miners can be characterized in terms of finitely many for miners. So that's what's called rare quasi ordering. So here's the blank, right? So blank one. So if one is minor, that's graph minor theorem. Now, uh, equivalent way of saying same state one is that uh, every infinite sequence of graphs must have a pair such that one is a minor of one. And if you replace this blank by pure minor or vertex minor, it becomes conjecture, so not, uh, not yet solved. There are some known cases. So, for instance, if graph is so. If, so in this second formulation of the conjecture, all the graphs are in C, some particular set C. If those graphs are restricted to bipartite or line graphs or bounded rank width or circle graphs, then we know this. And the reason why we know that's true is because the first two, they become a corollary of theorems on binary matroid and group labeled graphs due to Jim Gillan, Bolterrad, and Jeff Ritter. And for bounded rank width, it's my theorem. And for circle graphs, it's consequence of graph minors 23 it's about the emergence. Whose uh, graph minor, one of the corollary will be that circle graphs are well quadrilled by vertex minor. The first three of them, Actually, they imply stronger conjecture that the people miners for these. If you think of the induced subgraphs, what can you say? So in general, graphs are not well ordered by induced subgraphs. One example is the cycles, right? The induced cycles of lengths 3, 4, 5, 6, plus and none is a new subgraph of another. So that's an anti chain. But if you restrict to graphs of bounded rank depths, then suddenly they become well cajoled. So Robert Ganian and Peter Lani, Yaring Sitcher. How about the algorithmic problem? So if I want to find the H minor in a graph C, then due to Robertson Seymour's theorem, there's a polynomial time algorithm. So that has interesting consequence that any, any property enclosed under taking minors can be decided polynomial time. If you have a finite many forbidden minors, you can test each of the forbidden minors in time. And we don't have such a theorem. We these problems are widely open, so we only have a small cases. So for instance, my master student and Ozang and my parents worked on four examples. Six vertices was everything was polynomial. <laughs> but now this result is not really interesting because whenever H is a circle graph, it's polynomial because if H is a circle graph, you can assume that input graph has a small rank width. If input graph is a huge rank width, must contain particular circle graph anyway? The answer is yes, medically. And there, if rank width is small, then there's an algorithm. The people minor is still open. We have a so we had a, some conference paper arguing some cases for small numbers or small situations. If H is not fixed, if graph small graph H is not a fixed graph, then it's empty part. And for minors, it's been known, I mean, it's easy because finding long cycle in a graph as a minor is the same as finding Hamiltonian cycle. So, easy to be, easy to show that it's empty part. And for vertex minor, three people made a paper last year. That they are physicists working on quantum information theory. Uh, there is an algorithmic, so there is an application in quantum, quantum information theory uh, where they use local computations as one of the operations. Use the computations. 
So, and the two, two minor, we had a theorem saying that NPR. Okay. Now, last five or minutes, I will talk about the weakening of some of the conjectures on induced subjects. So, chi boundedness. So, a class of graphs for the chi bounded if chromatic number bounded by a function of click number, where the click number is the maximum size of click. Click is a set of pairwise adjacent vertices. So, this is a problem by Garfash, uh, Garfash, Garfash <laughs> where you want, so the problem is to determine classes of graphs which has a, such a property. When do we have a function f such that chromatic number is bounded by a function of click number? And he conjectured that whenever you forbid at least one induced subgraph, then you must have such a function. This conjecture is still widely open. And uh, 2009, Jim Gillan conjectured that if we if we relax this inducer graph by the vertex miners, then it may be true. So for every graph H, you forbid H as a vertex minor, potentially there may be a function such that the chromatic number is at most some function of the number. So why is this interesting? Because if you have such a function that you can use it to approximate chromatic number in the graph. So if function f is some good function, then because there's a polynomial time I will compute some function with sandwiched string number and chromatic number. So in, in polynomial time you can approximate chromatic number string number if this property holds. Now we do have uh, some known cases. So in 1985, uh, his paper already showed that circle graphs are so this class C, if it's a circle graph, then it's true. And rank width at most K. So if class has bounded rank width, then it's true. Goodbye, Demek and uh, then graph. And when you forbid the fan, so fan is a graph uh, obtained from pass by adding one vertex adjacent to everything. Then this true, this was proved by Ilgyu Chen. And then later extended to wheel, uh, when work is Hozin chain, different chain, and uh, Ozong and Serf and Paul Wallan. And but now, because they had a theorem saying the graphs of bound, if you forbid the circle graph, you have a bounded rank width. And if you have a bounded rank width, you have a bound, uh, then you have a chi bounded. So, then it's actually a circle graph. So this result was proved before this thing. Okay. So now uh, this is preceded by this one thing. But wheel is not a circle graph, so still dependent on the about the energy china property. So the class of graph called has the energy china property if there is a constant C. Every graph in this class has a clear or stable set of size into the state. And the conjecture of Erdrich Heinau says that whenever you have a class of graphs not, not containing something, but close, not containing some graph, a closed undertaking user graph, and user graph will have Erdrich Heinau problem. And what happens if you replace this closed undertaking inducer graph by vertex minus? Turns out that it's true. And so if you forbid any graph as a vertex minor, then class will have an LG China type. That's a theorem. And what about pure minors? We don't have uh, such a theorem yet. And uh, Jehun Gim and myself, the theorem saying that if you forbid one cycle of links K as a pure minor, then they have an LG China problem. But that's all. So maybe there may be a better 
some some technique to extend this to general graphs. And the nice thing about average chimera property is that if you oh yeah, so there's a connection between the chi boundedness and average chimera property. If you happen to have a polynomial function for chi boundedness, then you will automatically have average chimera property. That's one way to prove that something is energy china. If the function is polynomial, then you can say that, well, either Kling number is big, or if Kling number is small, then chromatic number is small. If chromatic number is small, then there will be big stable set. And then Luis, Asp Luis Asperger says that you couldn't find any class which is chi bounded but not polynomially chi. So is this true? Is every chi bounded class chi bounded? And nobody ever found the count example. Not many people believe it, but nobody found the count example. And so we could conjecture that maybe for any graph H, it forbid it as a vertex minor, the chromatic number is bounded by a polynomial function of Kling number. Don't know yet. And there are some cases where it's known. So Bingy and Ozang and myself and Baidi had a paper recently that if H is a cycle, then it's true. Polynomial function. And then there are other cases. For instance, if H is W5, then this is true. By combining two theorems. So one is that uh, James Davis and Rose McCarthy has theorem the circle graphs are Kaiba. Polynomially chi bounded, very recent work. And then uh, we had a theorem that closer by one joint will preserve poly chi bounded, called poly chi bounded. So when you combine these two theorems together with the structure of graphs without W5 vertex minors, you automatically deduce that when H is W5, have a polynomial function. So we still don't know what happens with uh, WN. And if H is a circle graph, then if you forbid the H as a vertex minor, you will have a bounded rank width. Right? If you have a bounded rank width, then we knew already that they are chi bounded. So recently, Mark Bonami and Philip Chu proved that graphs of bounded rank width will have polynomially will, will be polynomially chi bounded. So that means our result for cycle will be implied by their result. Cycle is a circle graph, so I think they're actually becoming a consequence of that theorem. Now, how about linear function? You're aiming a lot more, right? So instead of polynomial, what happens? When, when do we have a linear function? And it turns out that if H is a pass, you will have a linear function. The reason is, so uh, Ozang and Rose and myself and Kovalan had a theorem that when you forbid a pass, you will have a bounded rank depth. And if you have bounded rank depth, you have a bounded linear rank width by some inequality. And then they prove that if you have bounded linear rank width, then chromatic number is bounded by spring number times some constant. Right? So if you combine these things, aha, then, and then if H is a pass, then you're gonna have a linear you're gonna have a linear function that bound the chromatic number. Now there are results saying that chromatic circle graphs are not linearly chi bounded. For circle graphs, you need at least omega log omega number of colors, at least that's a lower bound. So if you want to have a linear function, you should forbid the circle graph. If you're not forbidding a circle graph, you contain all circle graphs and then it's not going to be high bounded. So any such function, any such graph H should be a circle graph. But not all circle graphs, not all circle graphs will work because the Citri and the others, they, in their paper, they also say that uh, rank width bounded graphs are not linearly high bounded. Need arbitrary high degree for the polynomial. 
So you will need more. So what happens if H is three? That could be one potential thing. And now one extra slide. Sorry for the time. Yeah. So this is the last slide. So I'm not gonna explain, but there is a something called the isotropic system by Andres Andre Boucher. And in terms of linear algebra, everything is described here. Uh, some linear algebra vector space. It turns out that minors of isotropic system correspond to the vertex minor of gamma. So this is one of the tools that I use to prove that graphs are well quasi ordered by vertex minor have a boundary rank width. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for your attention.